Welcome to Mixed Reception. I'm your host, Barrett Sigmund. And today, we have a very special guest, my sister, Madison Sigmund. Woo! Hi! All right, so today, well, let's back up a little bit. So you wanted to be on this podcast. Yes. And I'm always trying to find guests, so I was like, sure. You're desperate. And then you, you, you're right, I am. I am desperate. So <laughs> I'll take anybody. So, yeah, so he took me. He actually let me on. Yeah. And, or, and this is like only the fourth episode, so that just tells you how desperate I am. Yeah, uh, so if anyone's listening and you want to be on it, holler. He likes Facebook DMs. So you were like, okay, I want to be on it. And I was like, okay, what movie? And at first you said Twilight. And I, was I don't like, know. It's like you – I feel like with – and also backstory to childhood, <laughs> I feel like Barrett has always been like, okay – movies like he was like okay Barrett what do you think of this movie and we like your opinion was the most important so when you're like well, what movie do you want to do and I'm like wait you're not gonna just tell me so I had to really think about it well I'm not judging you I actually at first yeah, I, I was kind of like I said Twilight <laughs> at first I was like there's no way we're doing Twilight because everybody hated that movie but I actually what <laughs> that movie got mixed reviews more people yeah. liked it than you would think yeah well because that one was a book and then it was adapted into a movie, so, and then vampires were a thing for 10 years, so, yeah. But we're not doing Twilight today. You, you yeah. did an audible at the last minute. You were like, well, let's do Space Jam. Like, the, yeah. new, the new Jordan documentary, uh, The Last Dance is out, so it's timely. So, yeah. before we get into it, like, so, you've been watching The Last Dance. What do you think? Is it really intriguing? So I'm not, not that it's like history, but I kind of like knowing the behind the scenes on things like that. So it's kind of intriguing because I mean, we always knew about Michael Jordan, but we were like kids in the nineties. So it was, you just knew Michael Jordan's the best basketball player in the world, but it wasn't like, you didn't know the details. I didn't know you like punched somebody. I didn't know about, you know, what was the one that married Carmen Electra and they found him in Vegas. Like, I didn't know all this stuff. Oh, Dennis Rodman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's so much. It's really interesting. Um, I feel like the last two episodes and some of them have kind of gotten like a little like slow, but I mean, I'm excited for the finale. So I, I was going to say, so we're recording on Saturday. Tomorrow, Sunday is the the finale. Yeah. And I'm sad to, to see it end because there's not anything going on right now in the world. There's no movies. Sports is canceled. And I feel like this is like kind of – I would say, arguably, this is probably the only thing entertainment-wise people are, like, looking forward to every Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sad to, to see it end. Um, I'm a sucker for 30, to, 30 for 30. I actually – I don't have cable, so I actually downloaded the ESPN Plus app. So I have yeah. to pay – I actually have to pay a little extra a month because it comes with your Hulu and your, uh, your Disney Plus and stuff. So now you're not on my Hulu anymore? Well, I still am. I have, I'm too lazy oh. to change the password. But if you decide to kick me off, I actually do have Hulu. I don't know. After, after this, after the, the MJ documentary is over, I might just go back to my normal plan. I'm just mooching off me. Yeah, okay. Well. I love 30 for 30 docs. I think this documentary is awesome. I mean, I knew a lot. Yeah. I knew, you know, Michael Jordan kind of had uh, a gambling problem, which I feel like this documentary – I didn't know that. I'm like stupid. I don't know these things. I feel like I was, I would ask daddy about it and I would be like, he had a game for him. I was like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He did. And I just like had no idea. So for me, I think he's not as into sports as a bunch of dudes. I'm just, I'm, I'm like shocked about all this stuff. Well, I don't know. I feel like the documentary downplays a little bit. I think he was a lot more into gambling than, than. The well, I mean, he's probably on. producing it too though. So he probably has a say so in some of it. I knew Dennis Rodman was crazy, but I did not know that he wanted to take a vacation in the middle of the season and party in Vegas. And I didn't know that they actually had to come get him back. I know. That was funny. And then uh, Scotty Pitt, what, uh, why, why am I blanking on his name? Pippen? Pippen. Yeah. He was interesting. And he was paid so bad. There's yeah, so well, many. I, I was about to say, I didn't know about the shitty contract. And also, I didn't know that basically he was like, well, I'm not going to get surgery until – the season starts because fuck you guys. I know it's crazy. It just shows more like the business side of it, and oh, the owner's a jerk. It's, I it's interesting. I, I didn't know 
the GM, Jerry Krause, was such a dick. I know. Well, I mean, and also, so, in just kind of backing up, so the reason why I, why, so it was, Space Jam was on Netflix all of March and April, and of course we talk about this in May and it's off, and we have to actually pay to watch it. Um, you know, they but, probably did that because this documentary got really big, yeah, and they, and they so knew, watching, they knew people were going to want to watch Space Jam again. So they're showing all of Michael Jordan's, like, best, you know, Mo- like on ESPN, all they're doing the replay because the thing's premiering, and I didn't really, I knew there was a documentary out there, but I didn't really know. I was like, oh, I was like, they're probably his top ten plays, and they're not even going to mention Space Jam. That was his best career move. Well, they do <laughs> talk about it. They talked about it, I think, in the last episode. Yeah, they did, which was exciting. But it's so funny because then, then I was like, whatever, didn't think much of it. So then, I because I mean, I've been during quarantine, been staying up with my parents on the weekend, and your parents too. Uh, I was like, uh, I mean, they're your parents, ooh. Um, And then we were scrolling on Netflix, and sure enough, Space Jam was on there, and I was like, we should watch this. So I watched it like a month ago, but then I had to watch it again and take some notes. But I was like, because of all this hype, I was like, okay, like, this will be, this this would, this will be exciting, because, like, that's kind of the time that he did it. Because yeah. basically the movie's like a fictional like story of what happened before in between when he retired and he came back what are you talking about this really like, happened oh yeah i know, I know. sorry <laughs> all right it speaking of space happen. jam what how did you like hear about this movie get into it well actually this came out in 96 november like 96 so you two were two years, years old so you probably I probably watched it, but didn't know what was going on. But I just feel like it's kind of like the Disney movies, like, you know, when, like, the princess movies and all those movies, you know, growing up, up, you know what they are, and you just always kind of watch them. And, I mean, I remember we just watched it. I It was kind of funny, though, watching it again after being an adult, like, not being a child, and just being like, oh, I forgot that happened. But I knew, like, the basic storyline, but it was just kind of – I. I just feel like it's a classic to kids because it's Looney Tunes and like Michael Jordan. So like 90s kids kind of, you know, idolized him. But I mean, I heard of, I mean, it just was always around when I was little. So that's kind of how I heard about it. Yeah, I would. So, okay, this came out in 96. So I would have been six. I don't think it hit video until I was seven. I didn't see this in the theater. I think I got this for my birthday. Yeah. But I mean, I love this movie as a kid and holy shit, like, every kid in the 90s had this on VHS. Oh, I know. Well, I was going to say, I was, like, referring to this, like, piece of furniture that it used to sit in, but it's, that piece of furniture's not here. Yeah, anymore, where so. is our copy of Space Jam? Probably the garbage. I don't know. I know. Mama probably threw it all away, but, I mean, I don't know, because, I mean, we don't have a VHS player anymore, so what would we do with them? That's true. That's true. So, we don't. All right, I mean, so let's get into it. Yes. So this movie got mixed reviews. Yeah. Reviews at the time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give you some positives. I'm going to give you some kind of mixed. I'm going to give you some negatives. Just tell me what you think. Tell me if you agree with them. Okay. Siskel and Ebert, two thumbs up. Just out of how many? Oh, wait, well, two. <laughs> you know, Roger Ebert, Chicago Sun-Times, gave it a three and a half out of four. Jesus Christ. Space Jam is a happy marriage of good ideas. Three films for the price of one, giving us a comic treatment of the career ventures of Michael Jordan, crossed with a Looney Tunes cartoon and some showbiz warfare. The result is delightful. A family movie in the best sense, which means the adults will enjoy it too. I don't know about that. I, like, I, I, say, I like It was cool as... Like, I mean, it was cool as an adult watching it because I watched it as a kid. But if I was, like, an adult when this came out, I'd probably be like, wow, this is so stupid. <laughs> well, there are so, there is some adult humor sprinkled in, which we that, – that, that's in my notes. We'll get into that. <laughs> but three and a half out of four? Three and a half out of four. Like, that's kind of high. Yeah, I think it's, like, good. It is what – it's just you kind of have to take it for what it is. It's not, like – but actually – we can get into it later. But it won, like, some of the music and some things of it, like, won Grammys. Oh, well, we'll get into the soundtrack. The soundtrack was huge. Right. <laughs> Here's another positive. Leonard Malton, Jordan, is very engaging. The vintage characters perform admirably. 
and the computer computer generated special effects are a collective knockout. I mean, I don't. Was that in the '90s review? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess at the time, I think it, the effects looked good. Well, I was thinking about when Stan gets blown up like a big old balloon. I was like, oh my god, that's so cool how they do that. But now I was like, oh my god, it looks so fake. It looks terrible. <laughs> I mean, Jordan is very engaging. I mean, Michael Jordan's playing Michael Jordan. I don't think he really had to do a lot of heavy lifting in the acting department. No. TV Guide, a clinical attempt to cash in on the popularity of Warner Brothers cartoon characters and basketball player Michael Jordan, inspired by a Nike commercial. Two out of four. I mean, that's actually pretty accurate. Yeah. I mean, this kind of is one long commercial. Yeah, I mean, it's like him and then Looney Tunes and I don't know. It's, I mean, that's kind of probably one of the more accurate ones. I mean, it's nothing special. Margaret A. McKirk, Cincinnati Inquirer, two and a half out of four. Technical spectacle amounts to nothing without a good story. What? (laughs) I think the story's fine. I mean, it's very bare bones. I mean, it's just, it's pretty simple. I mean, there's really not much into it. I mean, literally, it's just. The monsters, like, they're going to be, those monsters are going to be in, or the Looney Tunes are going to be in slavery if they don't win a basketball game. And then basketball players are losing their powers, and then it's just, like, kind of a very basic plot line you can explain in, like, three sentences. Rotten Tomatoes. Critics, 44%. Audience, 63%. Consensus. While it's no slam dunk, Space Jam silly... (laughs) Looney Tunes, Latin slapstick, and vivid animation will leave younger viewers satisfied, though accompanying adults may be more annoyed than entertained. I think that's pretty, that's pretty accurate. That's priceless. <laughs> I like the punniness. It's no slam dunk. Metacritic 59, IMDb 6.4 out of 10. Box office. This was a big movie. So it had an $80 million budget. In the U.S., it made $90 million. Worldwide, it made two hundred and thirty million. It was the eighteenth. It. it was the eighteenth highest grossing movie of nineteen ninety six in the U S. But it was the twelfth highest grossing movie worldwide. So this was a big hit. Yeah, and I, I mean, get it to you. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I bet you that this was probably made even more in home video. Yeah, I mean, every kid had this movie. Yeah, I mean, I we had it. I, I, I mean, everyone watches it. Everybody still talks about it. And even before all this, um, like, because I remember in college, just thinking of the relevance, like, Toon Squad jerseys. Like, every time I went to a freaking fraternity mixer, everyone, if it was the theme fit, it was like they're wearing a damn Toon Squad jersey. So, like, all the stuff with it, I mean, it's relevant even now. So, before all the Michael Jordan documentary stuff came out. I mean, well, here's my thing. Now... Would kids now like this movie? Because no, I feel like, well, not. are the I feel like the Looney Tunes aren't popular As big. anymore. No, I mean because well, yeah. I I kind of looked into this a little bit. Like the late eighties, all throughout the nineties, Looney Tunes played on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. I thought it was just so, yeah. I mean, so we were aware of bro? we were aware of them, but now I don't think they play on Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network. I actually looked it up. They play on Boomerang. Do you know that channel? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's the sister channel of uh, Cartoon Network. Which plays but, old school stuff. But, well, yeah, but you got to have like fancy cable for Boomerang. Not what you have. You have that moochie ca- cable where you mooch off people. That's true. So I don't have Boomerang. So you would never see Looney Tunes. No. I just feel like, well, we're, we're going to get into this because you know they're making a sequel. With LeBron James. Yeah, I have a lot to say about that. I'm going to save my thoughts on LeBron towards the end, but <laughs> I, I'm very interested to see how the second one does because... Is it still with the Looney Tunes? Yeah. Oh, that's where I think... Uh, you kind of have to, though. LeBron is huge. He probably is this generation, Jim, MJ, but would do kids give a shit about Looney Tunes anymore? I just don't... I mean, do you babysit anymore? Oh, God. When I do babysit, it's very... It, the times are few and far between, but they're watching like uh, Paw Patrol or something like that. It's it's not Looney Tunes. 
it's weird stuff. <laughs> they, they, they do not watch old classic cartoons. I mean, Sponge, they don't even watch SpongeBob or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it'll be interesting. But we'll, we'll get into that. Let's go over notes. Okay. All right, so I just wrote down a bunch of stuff. It, it, good stuff, bad stuff, weird stuff, stuff I just well, found. A lot of my more questions. Like, what? What happened? I what do happened? have a lot of questions. There's some weird shit in this movie. I have to say, though, the opening line, I was watching it this morning at home. So Mom and Papa Sig are around watching it. And as soon as the R. Kelly opening, I believe I can fly. And all I hear is from Mama Sig, oh, I love that song. <laughs> she just like, that's all she says. I was like, if, oh, God. I just laughed because of R. Kelly. Like, I went through a time when I hated that song. But listening to it again... I, I, I was like, eh, this is kind of a good song. Now, R. Kelly is a creepy sex pervert. He's a pedophile. But wasn't at the time of the movie, so Well no, he was. <laughs> he was. Oh, people just no, didn't I mean, no, people did no, people just didn't know about it. <laughs> well, I just remember that song was so huge back in the nineties because I remember like kids would just like parody the song. They would just be like, I believe I can die. I oh, believe oh. I can poop my pants, you know, just like stupid shit. Is that your version of it? Yeah, I just remember, like, kids did that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was my first note. I put, well, wait a minute. Not the um, R. Kelly song, but the Space Jam theme song. The opening it credits. after the beginning. So the first, um, when did you watch this? I watched it last night. Well, I watched it this morning, so I'm a little more fresh. Um, but <laughs> the first scene is him and his dad. And he's like, I want to go to... North Carolina. Well, that's a real fan school, boy. And then, and then it's like, it's playing in the background. Like, I believe I can fly that the dad comes out. He's like, why are you outside? It's so late. And he's like, I got practice, man. And then he goes in to make this, like, dunk after dad's like, okay, let's go to bed. You don't know if he makes the dunk or not. Mind he probably you. made it. Probably. And then it goes into the Space Jam theme song credits roll. All right. Do you know the, do you know the lyrics? Everybody get up, it's time to roll. I don't even, I just kind of. You know, I have them written down. Everybody get up, it's time to slam now. We got a real jam going on. Welcome to the Space Jam. Here's your and chance to do your end. dance at the Space Jam. All right. And then my favorite part of the song. Hey, ho, oh, what you gonna do now? Hey, ho, oh, what you gonna do? <laughs> How many, like, they probably just continuously, like, repeat the like verses because I was like after a while like the opening credits were so long holy shit okay so we got to talk about the credits so yeah. this movie is 87 minutes long but really it's only like an hour and 15 minutes because I feel like so I feel long. like the end credits are 10 minutes and then like the opening credits are like five minutes so this movie is like panned out to like feature length yeah it's ridiculous I, it was so long I was like and I was like a note of like the so, but I also said, it's kind of funny now that you've seen The Last Dance, it's kind of like all of his like best moments in the credits because, you know, you've seen all those tidbits and in, in live now with all the Last Dance stuff. So then when watching that, I was kind of like, oh yeah, I didn't know all about that. Because Yeah, the Space Jam theme song, it still rocks. It just makes you want to get up and dance and shake your booty. Yeah, yeah, same, definitely. I I had to restrain myself from actually getting off the couch and doing that. I, I, I believe it. Yeah. All right, so my next note. Mr. Swackhammer, that nasty green boss Danny dude. DeVito. <laughs> okay, I have a theory. I think yeah. he is supposed to be Jerry Krause, the Bulls GM. They kind of look alike. Wait. I think I think MJ was like, hey, like, why don't you like draw this disgusting, fat, gross thing and model him after Jerry Krause? <laughs> oh my gosh. That's I, I don't know. I can't confirm that. But Did like you read on that or is that you? I didn't know I couldn't find anything about it, but that's just my theory. And like I don't know. I looked at Jerry Krause and then I look at Mr. Swackhammer and they kind of there's some similarities. They both have that like weird well, they both they're both fat as hell and they have this like Gross chin. Bossy. Yeah, yeah. they're both dirt bags, but I just, I, I, that was one of my notes. I put Jerry Krause, question mark. That's so funny. I didn't also, even think Also, the rides in this Moron Mountain, they're dangerous. I know. I put on my notes, I said, I wouldn't want to ride a ride that threw me out of my, and my seat into the air. And they just like get out totally fine. They're like, this ride sucks. Well, here's the thing. 
I don't blame that kid. And honestly, maybe you should fix your fucking rides, uh, Mr. Swackhammer. One of the rides is his, like, literally his, like, cigar, like, shooting people with fire. It's shooting, it's shooting people. Like, <laughs> your park is dangerous. No wonder people don't want to go to it. Yeah, I mean, that's the first problem. But, hey, if they just got, a, like, maybe some PR up in there, they could help them fix the problem, not go through all these links. But that's a, that would have ruined the movie, so. But anyway, that's the whole thing that sets <laughs> off the whole plot is basically they want new attractions. They want to get to Looney Tunes. Yeah. So we cut back to Michael ja- – Mark almost said Michael Jackson. Jesus Christ. Michael Jordan, because I put MJ. In I know my notes. I, put, I put MJ on there too. Well, I, so he's playing baseball. He sucks at it, but like I love how everybody like kisses his ass. Oh, I know, but it's also kind of funny because they're making fun of his baseball career. Like, well, and I think him. Michael Jordan at this point was just like, you know what? That little thing I did with baseball, I did suck. It was a joke. But in like kind of going back to the last dance, like they said, if he would have kept up with it, he wouldn't have been half bad. But I was actually just about to say that. Like, yeah, they said like, yeah, he struggled for a little bit, but he was getting better. And if maybe another season, he might have been in the majors. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just how baseball goes. You're not just in the majors day one. I mean, you have to build your way up. But yeah, everybody in the bullpen's like, oh, he looks great in that uniform. You can't and teach the way that. he would get pissed about like basketball games and stuff, like from you see on the last dance, and then he just sits down all casual and he's like, Man, I just couldn't help myself. And everyone's like, You look so great. And he's just kind of like, No, if this is basketball, he'd be kicking shit, slamming doors, pushing people out of the way. Like, he wouldn't just be all like, I strapped out, it's whatever. I'm just here to look pretty. Yeah, and then, and then one of the guys was just like, Oh man, oh man. MJ, that was a good-looking strikeout. Man, when I strike out, I look bad, but when you do it, it looks great. I know. I know. They were really kissing his butt. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so we're introduced to Stan, the fat guy from oh. Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, I was like, what he played in? That's right. I forget. He <laughs> was Newman on Seinfeld. Oh, he's been in oh, – what else has he been in? Jurassic Park, Newman from Seinfeld. This movie, I feel like he's been in some other things. I just can't, I can't remember. He'll always be the fat guy from Jurassic Park to me. Yeah, that's so funny. But it's he funny. Was, he was no. kind of annoying. I thought he was kind of funny. I, well, <laughs> he like rides Michael Jordan back to his house. And then Michael Jordan's like, thanks, Shirley. He like calls him Shirley. Or like Sheridan or something. Or something Sheridan. weird. And he's like, it's Stan, but you can call me Shirley if you want to, Michael. I know. He's like kissing his butt. Everyone is, though. Okay. But also, there, oh, go on. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, back to the baseball game, the freaking ship flies over, and everyone's like, oh, what was that? And then move on with life. Okay. Yeah. I put that in my notes. Like, nobody reacts normal. Like, They're nobody like, oh, reacts to things weird. in this movie. And we're going to get into it, but Larry Bird and, and Bill Murray. <laughs> I know, They're just kind of like, oh well. I hope Michael. I hope Michael Jordan's okay after he got sucked down that golf hole. So, anyways, I want to join the NBA. How? Who did you make the call to make that happen? Oh, we're gonna get into Bill Murray. Oh, okay, he's... MJ's house. It's a nice Love house. It. I'm not a snob, but Stan is just like, oh my god, that's. But a that nice. was such a '90s house. Like, that's that a, was nice like a nice house. 90s. It's a yeah. great house. I'm not a snob, but like MJ. I mean, I don't know what his net worth was at the time. I mean, he's a billionaire now. I mean. I'm sure back then he was worth hundreds and hundreds of millions. I mean, well, that probably, yeah, that probably wasn't his real house though. Oh, it probably wasn't, but I'm just saying in the movie, it's just like, I mean, you this, know that is, this is where you're family. living MJ. Yeah. It wasn't his real family either. No, but the kids, their, their names are his real kids names in real life. No, but the, they're actors. Yeah. Those are his kids names, but they, their kids didn't play themselves. Right. Right. That'd be weird. I were. know, but he was kissing on somebody else that was not his wife, and he is not a professional actor. And I just don't know how I felt about that. I also put the TV in his living room. Can he, can he not afford a better TV? I <laughs> know. I guess they're maybe just trying to make it more relatable. You I know? guess, but like, like I said, like you're, you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, and you have this like – I mean, they didn't really have the, like what, what, what we know as like flat screens today, but yeah. like you can get that a bigger TV, of- dude. Remember the Waxall house, like, little den we had, that loft? Like, yeah. that's what it reminded me of. But it's just, like, I'm guessing that is a 13-inch 
17 inch TV? I don't know. I just, I just expected MJ to have a nicer TV is all. So unrealistic. So unrealistic already. I know. All right. So basically those little alien things, they steal the talent. No, back up. Okay, They're watching we'll back the up. TV show. And then the Porky Pig, what's his name? Porky, Porky Pig. Pig. Comes in and he's like, oh, pause, pause, pause. Uh, we have an, an emergency. And they stopped the cartoon. <laughs> Speaking of Porky Pig, I put Porky Pig is the best Looney Tune. I love him. He's like, uh, uh, can, I, know. can I have your uh, 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 John Hancock? So Marvin the Martian, Pork, Porky the Pig, and Tweety all have the same voice. They're by the same person. Uh, oh, wow, really? I was watching the credits and noticed that. And I made a note, but... Yeah, I love him. He just stutters and mumbles. Uh, and just uh, so uh, I like I like at the end when he asks what time it is, and he's like seven, fa- se- seven, fa- fa- quarter past seven. <laughs> and no, and then they're like, "Well, how should we beat them?" He's like, uh, 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 "Spelling the b- 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 Yeah, <laughs> it was good. But yeah, I was like, they just stopped the cartoon. The kids are like, "What's that?" And just move on in life. No, no reaction. Just like that was weird. All right, the aliens show up, and they're like, "Hey, we're gonna take you prisoner." And then basically they come up with like, hey, like we have to defend ourselves. Yeah. So play basketball. Meanwhile, Sylvester is trying to eat Tweety Bird. That's his suggestion. He's like, we'll just wait till the lady leaves and we grab the bird. Okay. I, I, I have more on Sylvester in a minute. Sylvester does something very weird in this movie. And we're going to get into it. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> all right. So basically they steal the NBA player's talent. They and like it. no one reacts. That one lady's watching this happen and these blobs are coming out of the thing. She's like, ew, why don't you get better seats? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a, nobody, yeah, nobody reacts to anything in this movie. It's very weird. It's also kind of why it's kind of funny. Yeah, it's just kind of like, all right, move on. But for kids, they're not thinking about that either. So the five stars, Charles Barkley, Larry Johnson, Muggsy Bogues, Patrick Ewing, and Sean Bradley. Now, Larry Johnson and Pat, Muggsy Bogues, they played for the Hornets. The Charlotte I know. Hornets. And Muggsy Bogues lives down the street from our parents. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of cool. I know. We're kind of, like, relevant to this. I feel like this, is pro- this movie is probably the best thing that's ever happened to the Charlotte Hornets because we've never really been good. Well, we were good then. Well, no, we've never – I mean, we've, we've made the playoffs here and there, but we've never made it to, like, a, an Eastern – conference final i know and we have michael jordan as our owner so you know that's doing a lot for us yeah i'm I'm just gonna i'm just gonna go on a limb here and say this movie was probably the most relevant the charlotte hornets have been yeah i know and honestly i at the time i didn't even think of i guess i never realized that but then when they took them i was like oh charlotte that's where we went for me at least but you know it was cool all right so i have i actually have a little a beef about who they picked to be the Monstars. And now, and maybe these stars just didn't want to be in it, but like Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewan, I mean, they were, they were two of the best players at the time. So I could see those two, but then yeah. like Larry Johnson, like he was, I mean, he make a, he made a couple of all-stars, but like, he wasn't like, like super great. Muggsy Bogues. I mean, he was good. He wasn't like an all-star. He was kind of just known for how short he was. Five, three. Yeah, but I guess and it then, kind of make it dorky and like different height. Because then they had the really tall guy. And who was the tall guy? Was that? Well, um, well, I was gonna say Sean Bradley. He was like seven six. Like he wasn't like great. He was just kind of known for his height. So maybe, well, maybe they picked the monster. Yeah, I think they on, wanted like because they didn't all look the same. They probably wanted like okay, we got a really tall one, a really short one. So you knew which one was which. And I don't they know. I just think they should have gotten the five best players. I mean, I'm down with – Who would you I'm, have hey, Who would you have casted? So, I'm down with Charles Barkley, and I'm down with Patrick Ewan. I would have put Shaq in there, maybe. Maybe Scottie Pippen. Maybe Gary Payton. Maybe you, maybe you substitute Muggsy Bogues for Gary Payton. I don't know. Maybe Reggie Miller. I, I just think they're – I don't know. They could have gotten some better players, but it's fine. It worked. I mean, it was kind of – I mean, I guess it just depends who – you watch and stuff too. I mean, we knew Muggsy Bogues, but, but I can't say his name, Bogues. Um, we watched him because of the Hornets, but I mean, other people, they might just have thought that was random. But I think it, were, I think it was more like a hype thing, just so they all kind of look different, honestly. So I put this down because 
so they lose their talent, but and they're so bad, so bad that they can't even drink water. Yeah, like like uh, one of the players, he like tries to take a sip out of his water bottle, and he just misses his mouth. Yeah, I just thought that was really funny. Oh, like he forgot how to do basic thing. I didn't think that was a basketball skill. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, wait, wait a minute. I can get, I can see like they took your talent, but then like you can't even like drink water. I know. I was like, well, and then like, yeah, yeah, and then, but then fast forward when he goes, when was it? uh, Charles Barkley goes to play with those. uh, girls at the basketball oh, court he knows how to dribble he would dribble he dribbled a little bit but then he couldn't like really do much and they stole it from him yeah all right it so i wrote down i put i wrote down bill murray is the best part of this movie wait could you not okay so meanwhile all that's going on and they're all losing their powers did you not not powers <laughs> skills um did you not realize how they're saying talking about the discussion about germs from New York and how they spread like wildfire and like they're worried about the NBA and then they end up like suspending the NBA because of this potential virus. Ooh, this is a very topical movie. More than we thought. Age well. So my theory is that Space Jam predicted the coronavirus because they literally canceled the NBA season until they got to the bottom of it. Yeah, but like NBA players still have their skills or they still know how to drink water. But they didn't know it was, yeah, well, yeah, but I'm kind of more, I mean, you're worried about the water drinking. I'm like, uh, does anyone notice that literally Space Jam predicted the coronavirus? Because they were saying, for the safe, health and safety of our players, we are suspending all basketball until we get to the bottom of this, like, virus or disease or something. Wow. Because they thought it was, like, a disease. That's very eerie. I know. That's the right. first thing I thought. I put Bill Murray. He's the best part of this movie. I love that umbrella hat he's wearing. It's ridiculous. On on theme, though, for him. And it's just like, I love this running joke that he just really wants to play in the NBA. And they're just like, no, man, you can't. Like, like can you jump? Mm-hmm. He's like, well, no. Uh, well, I... <laughs> and then he's like, is it because I'm white? And then Michael's like, well, Larry's white. He's like, no, Larry is clear. I bet all of his scenes were probably improv. Yeah. Like, they probably like, kind of just go on this storyline, but say whatever. Bugs Bunny uses a magnet to move the golf ball. Okay, golf balls. Golf balls aren't magnetized, but whatever. It's Looney Tunes. Whatever. So he gets did sucked down the say, hole. Did you did you hear him say like, "Oh, my first one, first hole in one," and it's like not even because of his skill. It's because of a magnet, which is really sad for him. Feel so bad. Well, Michael Jordan loved golf and gambling. Oh well, where did he get to gambling? Because he <laughs> makes the the most ridiculous bet in this movie. <gasps> <laughs> uh so michael jordan gets sucked down the hole and i love how bill murray and larry bird are just like oh huh, well i hope mj's okay and they're just like and, and, and bill murray just keeps going on and on like hey like uh so like you're still friends with the commissioner do you think you can like you know yeah they just you know, drive off and then they're like what kind of phone you got <laughs> and no one cares except stan and they just move they drive away and he's like how can i get an nba who if you made a call that could really help and yeah, yeah. they just move on Okay, MJ is in Toon Land, I guess. Yes. And this is where I wrote, this is where we go back to Sylvester the cat. Oh, God. He comes out of the sewer? Like, what is he doing in there? I didn't even see that. I noticed that. I was just like, what are you doing in there, dude? (laughs) I just thought that was weird. He was always kind of creepy and hiding so he could get Tweety Bird. And then... He said, yeah, but like Tweety's up in the tree. So, like, what are you doing in the sewer? He's like, I thought I saw a. I did. I did see a Michael Jordan. <laughs> All right, so they do like a physical on MJ, and he's got a paper clip in his ear. Did you notice that? Oh yeah, that was so gross. They were like looking at his ear, and it like looked like it was clear through and through. And they're like, "Eh, what's up, Doc?" Oh, I did like the line, and again, it just they keep shitting on like Michael Jordan's baseball career. Oh yeah, and they're like, they're like yeah, "Oh, nice. we need you to play basketball with us, with us, Michael." And then Michael yeah. Jordan's like, I'm a baseball player. I got to get to my game. And then, and then Bugs is like, baseball, right. And I am a Shakespearean actor. A- actor. All right. And so they hold it. <laughs> the skull, yeah. I wrote this down. The Monstars. Yes. They all wear zero on their jerseys. Because they're losers. But, like, if they get filed, like, how do they know which one to differentiate? Pink one, blue one. I don't know. Like, what's that foul call like? Foul. Zero blue. Oh, uh, oh, love. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's now. I just thought like 
come on, you got to give you got to give the monsters some numbers. Yeah. All right, I, so I didn't even think about that. I guess I kind of thought be like the big one, the tall one, the short one, the blue one. All right. So back on Earth, players who lost their power, they're like going to the doctors. They're like seeing psychiatrists, and this is one of my favorite lines. Uh, the psychiatrist asks Patrick Ewing. He's like, other than basketball, are there any other areas you find yourself unable to perform? And then Patrick went Ewing's over, like, Patrick yeah, Ewing's like, what, head. man? <laughs> no. When I was a kid, I mean, that, I probably just, what, like, that went over my head. I did not, would not have Oh, absolutely. That. But that's, like, the one, like, adult joke. I know. That's, the, like, that's uh, a bit, I was like, oh, my God. That would, like, a kid would not understand that. I love Muggsy Bugs, too, in the scene. He's like, I'm trying to disobey my mama, but I love my mama. I know. <laughs> He's like actually just giving his life story and his problems. I also wrote down Stan. Jesus Christ. He dug the shit. He dug a huge asshole. Yes. I'm like, how the hell? This is what I wrote. Exactly. How the hell did Stan dig such a big hole? And then, oh, well, uh, earlier they're like, what are you doing, dude? And he's like, I'm fixing a divot. And he's like, oh, he's fixing a divot. Like, okay, yeah, that's, that's going to work. But you just skipped the whole part about when the, the Looney Tunes go into their, his house to get his shorts because they need, he needs his basketball shorts and shoes. That was funny. I liked when the dog had him cornered and uh, Bugs Bunny was like, how about a holiday ham? Oh, yeah, I wrote that down. The holiday ham. And it's like, a bone, a holiday ham. And then the kids, then they see the kids and they're like, the kids are here. And then they come in and like grab the shorts from him and they like toss it to him like, hey, your dad's helping us play basketball game. Just don't tell anybody. They're like, okay. This phrase is a serious question. It's established at the end of the movie. It's probably a home game because his family is in attendance at the baseball game. Yeah. Does the wife, does she just not care about where Michael is? I, well, I, I'd be willing yeah. to bet this, this is probably over the course of like a couple of days. That's I so mean, true. in the real world, Michael Jordan's probably missing. Well, they thought, maybe they thought he was like, oh, he's just, you know, hotel for a game, blah, blah, blah. Like, also, you know, like, did his team, does his baseball team not wonder where he was? No. Well, see, and that's just the stuff that, like, it's made for kid audience. I know. I'm just saying. Stuff. We're adults now, and these things don't make any sense. It matters. I agree. I feel like half of my notes are, like, questions that, like, okay, you have to think about it. Yeah, I guess that appeals more to a kid just not to go into those details. But we want to know. Were the cops waiting for him? Lola Bunny. <laughs> I thought mean, Lola Bunny is a baller. Well, it's also kind of weird. Me. They're trying to Aww. make this, like, bunny, like, all sexy. Like Jessica Rabbit. Well, they give her an ass and titties, and tank top is, like, slipping down Crop her top. shoulder. Crop top. I mean, I don't know. Kind of kind of creepy. And then she does the, like, don't ever call me, doll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bailey and I used to imitate her all the time. Oh, yeah, you. I remember that. <laughs> We would be like, don't ever call me dumb. I wrote this down. They really don't practice that much. They're, when they're all learning how to play, they're like going rampant. Like they're like going in different directions, stealing the ball from each other and like going, then like Coyote follows the Roadrunner into the like a wall. And it's just like, they're going crazy. It's like they never even played basketball before. Well, but the, like, instead of like practicing, they're like, they're just like watching a Richard Simmons workout video. <laughs> Well, that's my, that's kind of my, uh, it's so weird. They really get quick to the game. Like, they really don't spend a lot of time practicing. Like, I think they are kind of like, all right, game tomorrow. Okay, we got to work quick, get Michael. All right, so we get to the game, and then I put, I wrote this down. Marvin the Martian is a horrible referee. Yes. Well, there are so, so like many blatant fouls. Show. He was so he was evil in Looney Tunes. So, like, of all people to trust as your ref, I mean, it's kind of fitting that he would just let everything go. But, like, holy shit, he doesn't call anything. I mean, people are getting slapped at one point. The, I think the orange guy does, like, a like a belly flop on top of Bugs Bunny. The green guy breathes fire and burns uh, Foghorn Leghorn. Also, did you not die the fact that he had a um, – or maybe that's – I'm thinking of uh, Yosemite – what is it, Sam? Yosemite oh, Sam. Yeah, yeah and – and he had, like, a gun. But, no, it was funny when uh, Foghorn and Leghorn – I had to look up their names because I forgot their names. Um, he was like, would you like original or extra crispy? <laughs> He's so funny. <laughs> All right, so this game is ridiculous. 
What is your favorite gag? I mean, because so much shit happens. So I thought it was funny. I mean, the first part where they're getting dominated, it's so obvious, whatever. But then when they do this, like, special stuff, like the water, Ooh. and then they come back second half, and they're all, like, really good. But it's literally – it was kind of sweet because uh, Bugs Bunny was like, just go along with me. He's like, Michael's secret stuff. And everyone's, like, drinking it. And, like – and Stan's trying to drink it, too, thinking, like, <laughs> it's something special. And – um and then they go out and they just do all this, they do all this crazy stuff. So I wrote down a bunch of stuff. I was a lot of destruction acts happening during the game. Like, how is this even legal? I said explosives, skunk in the gas mask, the guns, the mopeds, the painting on the butt and the bull. Oh, that's my off. favorite. I love how Daffy just paints that dude's butt. And then there's like a, there's like a bull who's just having the time of his life in the stands. He's like eating and then popcorn he just stands up. and he freaks the fuck out. And he just like, Barrr! and he goes after him. And then they all come back to the game. Like, they all get injured and brutally beaten up, and then they're still in the game. Oh, I wrote this down. To, to go back to the Michael's secret stuff, Bugs Bunny drinks it, and he turns into this, like, huge, muscly. Yes! Like, but here's the thing. So Lola Bunny's like, wow. I mean, she's like, whoa. She's, she's into like him. But then he's Daffy, weird. I think, okay, I wrote this down. Is Daffy Duck gay? He's just angry. Well, he's no, just, Daffy, like, Dunk, it, it, Daffy Dunk. Daffy Dunk. Ha, Daffy Dunk. Daffy <laughs> Duck. He, can't, he like, can dunk. Well, he's like, whoa, nice deltoids. I know. Oh, God. It was, but it's like, okay, here was my thought on that. If he could, like, if they could grow muscles like that, when it, why didn't they do that before the game? If it's like a cartoon world. I don't know. But also, uh, it's worth noting, Daffy Duck does this, like, there's this part. We skipped this, but he does, like, a little runway, like, fashion oh, yeah. show he's like more concerned about fashion than his like i think duffy duck is gay there's nothing wrong with that i just i just noticed it i think he I think he's into bugs well he's just jealous of him and because he loves him well that's true too i put the bet now we lo- we know mj loves gambling but he yeah. ga- he gambles his whole life in slavery if he loses he's gonna be he's gonna be chained up and then People have to play one-on-one basketball games with him, and he has to lose every time, and he hates losing. I mean, I would not make that bet. He was so confident, though. I mean, if you lose, you're screwed. He Hmm. was, like, not going to take losing for an answer. All right, we get to the last quarter. They're all hurt, and then Bill Murray comes out. Wait, wait, before you say that, hold on, I wrote something funny. Um, (laughs) Oh, God, what's his name? I think it's Elmer Fudd. He's, oh, yeah, why is Elmer Fudd in a stray jacket? They're all, like, convulsing, and he's, like, in a stray jacket, like, (laughs) Oh, I did not notice that. He's literally in a stray jacket. Like, he went crazy. So Bill Murray shows up. It's awesome. I love how, like, he's drawing up a play. He's like, you go, you go to the hole. You go to the hole. And he's like, Girl Bunny, you take the ball. Then pass it to Boy Bunny. And then Michael's like, we're on defense. He's like, whoa, I don't play defense. <laughs> well, so anyway, they win the game. It's, and in the most ridiculous way, Michael Jordan stretches his arm, which it, which it feels like he stretched it half a court's length. Yeah. And, so they, and so they win. And Before then, that, like, okay, can I just say sure. that whole play? So basically, he explains, like, oh, you're on Looney Tune land. Like, you can kind of do whatever. And he's like, really? You're going to tell me that with 10 seconds left? So there's 10 seconds left. That whole scene between when they, the play starts and then he goes to the, like, to reach his arm out and wins was probably, like, almost a minute. Because literally, he's, like, doing that. They're tackling him. They pass the ball a couple times. And then he's going to the half court. And then he's looking at the clock. And there's still three seconds. And that's after 45 seconds have gone by. And then yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's The timing was ridiculous. so – I was like, oh, my God. It's not it's like the longest 10 seconds of my life. But I love it. They win the game. And then Michael Jordan is like, hey, Bill, like those were some good moves out there. You, you might be able to make it into the NBA. And then Bill Murray's like, no. No, I think I'm going to retire. I'm going to go up on top, undefeated, no tie, untied. No yeah. <laughs> and then I guess he pulled a hamstring or something. And he's like, you sure? And he's like, yeah. And he's just like – just. Yeah, I, <laughs> I put in my notes. I was like, Bill Murray retires. He lived a he lived a great basketball career. One play. But yeah, I mean that's that's all I got for my notes. Yeah, I mean it was kind of just funny though at the end, um, like he like gets back on the baseball field on a spaceship and still now 
that's when R. Kelly comes back in saying, I believe I can fly. But he just lands on the middle of the baseball field for his game, all dressed up. And no one says anything about a freaking spaceship dropping him off. Oh, no. Oh, it's so weird. It's the most bizarre thing. Like, it, nobody acts normal in this movie. Yeah. And then... Oh, I did like the, the end at the, when Bill Murray and Larry Bird... <laughs> the Here's the thing. Bill Murray and Larry Bird, I, I, wanna, I want that movie. I just want a movie of them just hanging out. Oh, yeah. Well, Larry's like, well, what's, what's wrong, Bill? And he's like, I missed my chance. Miss my like, chance. you have no idea. Yeah, he's like, it's over. Your dream's over. Let's move yeah, on. Yeah, he was it. Like, that was as good as it was going to get. It's just so random how Bur- Bill Murray was even in the movie. So that's part of trivia. Oh, God. That would be a good, that would be a good uh, segue because I wrote, well, first, do you have anything else to add about the, the movie? Well, did you watch all the way through the credits? I did. Okay, I want to make sure you did. <laughs> this is the first time I saw this. Yeah, oh, that I they have... were at the end and they're like, hey, that's my job. Michael. Michael Jordan's like, can I go home now? <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, that's about it I had for the movie. But, gosh, but now you're going to ask me all these questions and I'm not going to find out any of them. So Bill Murray, actually, he wanted to do this movie because he was offered the chance to star in Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I've never seen that movie, but it was like a big hit. It's, uh-huh. kind of, it's a classic. He turned it down. So when they approached him for this movie, it was like, well, okay, like I missed my chance to do one cartoon movie. I don't want, I don't want to miss out on this. So that's why he's yeah. in the movie. I wrote Michael Jordan actually wore his North Carolina Tar Heel college basketball shorts, shorts under his Chicago Bulls uniform every game. That's a good luck charm. Yeah. Jesus I saw him on the last, that last dance. That, I think they said that. What did he play? Like what? 16 years? That's, those shorts had to be like, just did he have multiple and, pairs maybe maybe i don't know but that's a lot also, of washing like, you know, now that i'm thinking about those shorts when the dog is holding the shorts in the closet how the freak did the dog get in the closet oh i didn't even think about that that makes no sense and none of it does in that he had the shorts and it just happened to have the shorts in his hand i wrote while while praying in church for the return of his basketball <laughs> skills charles barkley says I'm never going to go out with Madonna again. This refers to his own fling with Madonna, not Dennis Rodman's fling. So I guess they're Eskimo brothers, Dennis Rodman and Charles Barkley. Okay, because I was like, I remember hearing something about in The Last Dance how uh, Dennis Rodman and Madonna dated. And then I was like, wait, I thought that was so, it's funny that I, I noted that because I was like, wait, Madonna and Dennis Rodman dated. And he they dated, I mean, she got away around. Holy shit. And- so Madonna was like, the Kardashians. She was like a groupie yeah. of the NBA player. She was no, a she was, a, she was the original Kardashian. Because, you know, Dang. the Kardashians, they, know love, they love their basketball players. <laughs> I know. Oh, God. That's a whole other discussion. So, originally, the director wanted Michael J. Fox to play stand, but he was overruled by the studios. Jason Alexander and Chevy Chase were also considered. I feel like Michael J. Fox is too cool to play stand. Yeah, no, the person who played Stan was perfect because he was dorky and, like, I mean, you don't want someone who's, like, a, like a famous – I mean, he's not as big as some of those other actors, so you wouldn't want him outshining. Michael Jason Jordan. Alexander, I could see. Chevy Chase, I feel like, nah. He's, like, just as tall as Michael Jordan, I feel like. Maybe. Well, but also, like, I can't see Chevy Chase being, like, the – or like, you know, oh, my God, Michael, you know, like the, the – Kissing my oh, yeah. ass. And, Stan uh, was perfect for it. He was, that was the perfect, I say Stan like his name. Wayne Knight <laughs> is the actor's name. Wayne Knight was perfect, Stan. To go back to Bill Murray, his jersey number is 22. It's a nod to the film Groundhog Day, which occurs on February 2nd, or 2-2. Oh. Your mind's blown. All right, important. this is my last bit of trivia. This is, this is kind of interesting. There's a bit of directing controversy. So the credited director is a guy named Joe Pitka. I, I think he oh. was primarily like a video, a music video director. But people who worked on the film said that he actually didn't really direct the movie. It was actually Ivan Reitman. Ivan Reitman is the guy who did Ghostbusters and Meatball. Those are Bill Murray movies. Yeah. So supposedly Ivan Reitman actually directed the live action scenes. And then Joe Pitka did the animation. But oh, Joe well, I guess Pitka, that makes sense. It's two different kind of specialties. 
but Joe Pitka got the he got the main director's credit, and uh, Retman is only credited as producer. I found who that interesting. In the, who, who featured? Because the last episode of The Last Dance, the director showed up. It was Joe Pitka. Okay, and they built him a gym and everything during that, so he could train, which was crazy. That's just another tidbit. All right, so I'm gonna go over this real quick. Hey. So a sequel for this movie has been in development since 1997. Originally, they wanted to do a Space Jam 2 with Michael coming back. Michael said no. When was this? This was 97. In 97, okay. the year after it came out, they wanted Michael back, and he was like, nah, I'm good. So there was a lot of ideas for the, the second one. Spy Jam with Jackie Chan. Oh, God. Race Jam with Jeff Gordon. <laughs> Uh, Golf Jam with Tiger Woods. And this next one, okay, I would have loved this one. Skate Jam with Tony Hawk. Okay, I could have gone down with that. Okay, you do that in the late 90s. The late 90s, early 2000s, that was like extreme sports, skateboarding. That was Skateboarding was so big. At its, at its, at its peak. I would, have been, I would have been so down for that. Did you know they're, they're coming out with a remake for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2? Yeah, I saw something about that. I, Are you going to get it? Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I remember, like, Bailey and I would always, like, sit in the background of you playing video games all day, and all those same songs would just play over and over. I'm trying to even, I'm trying to think of one, but. Uh, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-d
like with the NBA players that were in it, like they were having to act like they didn't know how to play basketball and were just stupid. It's time to address the elephant in the room. Space Jam 2 or Space Jam A New Legacy. It's currently, now I don't know if it's going to get delayed because of the coronavirus stuff. Yeah. It's coming out July 16th, 2021. I'm not going to see this movie. I don't think it's just going to be as relevant. Like, if they would have done something right after, I don't know. I just... Well, that's my thing. We talked about it a little bit earlier. I don't think kids give a shit about Looney Tunes anymore. I don't think anybody watches Looney Tunes anymore. I'm yeah, telling I you, the late 80s, all throughout the 90s, Looney Tunes were pretty big. I mean, they played it on Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network. I mean, they don't come on TV anymore. Unless you have Boomerang, which I don't know who has Boomerang. Um, but boomerang. I just yeah. feel like kids today, I, I, do they even know the Looney Tunes? They probably have like, seen them, but it's not as like, I mean, we were like, oh, Looney Tunes. I mean, that's what we watched. It was Looney Tunes. And then Michael Jordan was like this big icon in the 90s. So it was like relevant. Now, the only people that would be excited about it, and even you're saying that you wouldn't want to go see it, are people who are our age and like, oh gosh, LeBron James and the Looney Tunes. But I just, I think it would just be LeBron James bringing in. I mean, I don't know. I'd be interested to see how that goes. 90s nostalgia is huge right now. I, I feel like adults in their late 20s, early 30s will might go check this out. But I just can't see a kid dying to see Space Jam and a new legacy. I just can't. And I got a hot take here. I think this movie, I think it's going to bomb. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll But I was on Wikipedia, and I, and I looked up the budget for this movie. $160 million. Do they really expect this movie to do that well? That's a big budget. Oh, that's like, because the budget for this, I saw it on, and I think you mentioned it, it was like $80 million. 80. Yeah, but it, it did two thirty. dollars Here's the thing. I don't. I can't see this movie doing two thirty. I could but be Yeah, wrong. it's not going to do as well. And just, I mean... I mean, LeBron James, it's like, I just feel like his hype isn't as, I mean, maybe this is because NBA season was canceled, but it doesn't seem like he's like, he's a big deal, but he's like not as big of a deal as maybe was so like two years ago. So they've been trying to get Space Jam 2 off the ground with LeBron since 2014. I feel like people wanted this movie, if they did want it at all. They wanted it five years ago. And yeah. LeBron is still a great player. Don't get it twisted. I want to say he's going to be getting up there. He's not like super old, but like he's, I, I think he's past I think when he was prime. with the Cavs, it was more relevant for him to maybe be on it. And now he's like with the Lakers and I don't know. I don't think it would be as big. I think they would have had better luck with a sequel doing something like uh, Skate Jam. Oh God, I want Skate Jam. Gosh, I would be down. I'd be, I would love it if they just said, sorry, LeBron, Tony, get in here. Like, uh, what is your, what is your opinion on LeBron? I mean, I think he's kind of overhyped. I think he's a douche. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you probably know more about basketball than me. That's where I, I just know Michael Jordan and documentaries that he's a part of. So, but so, but LeBron James, he like I don't know. I just think he, I mean he's like a good player and stuff. But I mean I do think he can be kind of rude. But I mean he's a, he's only human. Oh, I, I have a category on my notes which are typed out called uh, LeBron is a douche. <laughs> uh, and I, I have so I remember when he left Cleveland the first time and there was this big TV special it was like an hour long TV special on ESPN called The Decision about which team he was going to go on so he picks the heat and then him and Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade they, they're like on stage and there's fireworks and everybody's like I mean, it's, it was so ridiculous and douchey and oh god he's just so arrogant and then I remember when he came back to Cleveland, there was this like cheesy, like overdramatic Nike commercial about him like coming back to Cleveland. Oh, and then there was there was the there was the video. I'm coming home. Coming oh gosh, home. that's so I awful. want the world to tell me that I'm coming or whatever the lyrics are. Oh my god! So I remember one of my friends. She was in Cleveland for some convention during I guess that when the Cleveland Cavaliers were in like the finals the first time and everyone was just like hell yeah like Cleveland was going crazy and they're in their hotel and people were like getting shot outside and they're like had to stay in the hotel because it was like it was riots I mean it was just such a oh, when he left Cleveland no this is when they were in the championship oh like, when they won the when first... they beat the when yeah. they beat the Warriors yeah yeah or, yeah yeah it's just um, crazy I, I just know. feel I... like he's definitely I kind of compare it to like 
part of Michael Jordan's career, though. It's like he's definitely one of those people where he's almost like not a one-man team, but he's definitely like carrying the team. Well, he had Scottie Pippen, but I feel like I feel like LeBron just like yeah. I mean, he basically just bails on Cleveland to join a super team, and that's kind of what he does. He he forms like super it's teams. Itself, he's not. Whereas like you know, you can see, like, Michael Jordan really cared about the coach and the team and stuff, but just hated the, like, upper management. Oh, uh, LeBron James is a coach killer. Well, I mean, just ask Tyron Lue and Luke Walton. Yeah, he seems like he's only in it for himself. Yeah, I love, and I hate that he calls himself the GOAT, and then his Twitter handle is King James. Yeah. And then he, and he God, he wants to be, God, he wants to be Michael Jordan so bad. He, he, tosses, tried, yeah, he, he tosses up the chalk just like MJ did. And he also, I watched a video today. Um, there's a lot of flop compilations with LeBron oh. James where he just like gets, yeah, he just flops. That was really funny. I don't know. Like I, flops, I, like falls on the, on the Yeah, so court. he'll get touched on the court and then he'll just flop. Oh, he'll he'll yeah. basically oh, make the, the, the foul or the getting touched like a bigger deal than it really is. Oh, yeah. Needless to say, I am not going to be seeing Space Jam, A New Legacy. It's just like, I felt like, and this is kind of like, yeah, I don't think I would either. I don't, there's not a lot of positivity other than like LeBron James is just like the current best player probably in the NBA. But it's like Michael was like an all, known as an all around good guy. So like people wanted to want to be like Mike. And they also, don't like- I read an article. I, I remember reading this last year and then I actually looked into it today. Rumor was that, like, he was trying to get all the big stars to be in Space Jam 2 with him. And a lot of them were basically like, no, dude. LeBron James? Yeah, they didn't want to – they don't want to be in the movie with LeBron. Yeah. They probably don't like him. All right, so final thoughts. Let's wrap this up. Give me your final thoughts, and let's rate this out of five. Out of five stars. Okay, I would give it, I would probably, out of five, I would probably give it a 3.2, because I know you don't like whole numbers. You gotta, you gotta have the decimal in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought it was good. It's entertaining. It's funny. You know, for a kid, I definitely loved it. I mean, is it the, like, best movie in the world? No, but I mean, it's just, it's, it's an iconic 90s movie. So, I mean, I definitely give it that. I think it, kind of exceeded some people's expectations. It's good. I like it. I 3.2. I stand firm. I'm going to give this a uh, three out of five. Uh, so you're not going to just do that? No, I thought, that's only for pizza reviews. Uh, I was like prepared. I was like, I got to think of a decimal. Like, hey, so I would it. you I still give it a 3.2? I was probably just going to give it a three out of five. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm going to give it a three out of five because I, it was a nice stroll down memory lane watching this last night. But it, it just does not hold up as well. I, I found it's this, this movie cool. wasn't like hilarious. I mean, I did. There were some parts that made me chuckle. I think most of the humor hits. Some of it misses. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's still like for a kid's movie. I think it's, I think it's pretty serviceable. It's, I think kids, I, I, kids like ages like four to like nine. It was like that five-year window where I think kids would really enjoy this. Well, yeah, but like in the nineties. <laughs> oh, but the <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I don't. Kids I don't probably wouldn't give a shit about this today. It. Yeah, I don't um, know if they would enjoy it because I feel like they would be like, "Wait, who's that? Who's that?" You know, they wouldn't know some of those people. Yeah. Oh, this old. movie's such a such a product of its time. Mm-hmm. For sure. I think that about does it. All righty. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being a guest, and we will see you guys next week.